The Overcomer series is brought to you by Janiel Alcock, The Gift Curator J.A., Scripture Trinkets by A.P. We see each other many times by our titles, careers, or how we look physically. But behind each face, there is a story to tell about triumph over trial. We can also learn how God has brought us to where we are by His supreme grace and goodness. Let's explore the lives and testimonies of some amazing humans on the Overcomers series. This week on the Overcomers series, we meet the intelligent pneumopsychosomatologist and clinical therapist Cheryl Chung. Cheryl decided on an unconventional path of education by learning topics related to health and wellness with a concentration on the theology behind them. Hear Cheryl's story of how she ventured into therapy and healing and used her skills to teach others how to reverse diseases naturally. And listen as she shares knowledge to those who may wish to combat illnesses and diseases using alternative medicine. Good night, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Overcomers series. We are seated right here with the wonderful Dr. Cheryl Chung. And she is a lady of magnificent fire and of uh, brilliant education. She's laughing because, but, but I do not give um, great exclamation. She's a wonderful person. But tell me a little bit more about yourself before we get into the actual topic. Oh, okay. Well, in relationship to the topic, um, I, my purpose, let's just look at my purpose because this is a part of my purpose. Mm -hmm. My purpose is to try and propel people into their purpose. That's really my overall purpose in life. And so it involves my making them aware of who they were created to be and then how they can come into their purpose. And in, in pursuing that goal for myself to come into my purpose, I have three areas of, what should I say, interest that I have pursued studies in. I'm a Pneuma psychosomatologist, which means pneuma, spirit, psycho, soul or mind, soma, body, tologist, the study of. So I study body, soul, and spirit in order to come up with, uh, what should I say, how you can use all three of them in getting into your purpose. And then the second thing that I concentrated on was um, supernatural. I'm a supernatural life coach. And that means that I recognize that the only way you can come into your purpose and be successful at anything is to operate in your supernatural realm. Because we all live in the supernatural as well as in the natural. And then the third thing is I'm a clinical therapist. That means I have studied every known condition of the spirit, the soul, and the body, and provide therapy, the way to reverse them. So it's just all information. So I don't do anything. I just give you the information and you decide if you would like to use it. But that is where my whole life goal is bringing other persons into their purpose and helping them to just actualize themselves to be everything that they can be cheryl that is a mouthful and uh, the pneumopsychosomatologist is that something unique to yourself or do you know of other persons who have done such a thing mm, well I guess it was unique before I heard about the actual name 
Yes. Because I I started out as a, a minister at a church where my first degree was in um, beaming. It was a bachelor's of ministry. So I thought that people needed ministry to their souls in order to come into who they really were. Because I thought it was the biggest issue that people have, okay? And I worked full-time, in full-time service with the church. And so, you know, I was out there showing people how they could use their spirit to come into real life. And then I, I found out that most of their issues were psychological, <laughs> not spiritual. So that's what comes to the prayer meeting. You know, they have relationship problems and they don't have this and that and that and that. And then I said, okay, I'm going to do another degree. And this time I'm going to do counseling psychology. So I could show people how to manage their psyche and their soul area. So I went and I did a master's in clinical Christian counseling psychology. Okay. So, and then I'm still working full time in the church. And of course, in charge of prayer meetings and this and that and that and training counselors. And then I found out that, oh, you know, I'm dealing with relationships. Most of the people come to prayer meeting now, sick and want healing. I said, oh my goodness, back to the drawing board. So I decided I'm going to do a doctorate in, in the area of clinical, I wanted to do orthomolecular medicine and psychiatry, which is looking at all the physical diseases, the spiritual diseases and the psychological diseases at the molecular level. Well, there's nobody who offered that. So I decided to do all research on my own and just do a, a doctorate in counseling psychology and do that part as my thesis. You know, the physical thing, right? Yeah. And so I went ahead and I did that. Well, I still didn't get to the bottom of things because people were no, I was now dealing with spiritual issues I was dealing with the psychological issues, relationships, problems, and then I was dealing with the physical issues. So I now knew how to reverse every physical disease by rebalancing the molecules in the body, right? But there was that disconnect because I now realized that you can't deal with these three things separately. You have to deal with them together. And so I said, well, how can I do this from a biblical perspective? So I said, okay, I'm going to go and do a PhD in biblical hermeneutics and Jewish studies, because I wanted to study the life of Jesus as a Jew from a biblical perspective and how he used the word to heal body, soul, and spirit. So I went to Israel, did all of that, blah, 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 and that is how I started to operate as a pneumocyclosomatologist, but I never knew that word. And then I was a part of a group called The More Excellent Way by this pastor in the States who was really doing that, addressing issues from the body, soul, and spirit thing. And he was the one who I, I think came up with the pneumocyclosomatologist and invited persons to study with him to get that um, denomination, I did that. I became an associate of that organization and became officially a pneuma psychosomatologist. And it sounds like a big word, but it, it says exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. Consequently, it's great that people can understand, know that any condition you have, whether it is physical, spiritual, or psychological, it the healing requires the involvement of all three parts of the person. Cheryl, that is a mouthful. But <laughs> what I'm fascinated by is your holistic approach to this thing. Because there are some doctors who may look at the physical, not understanding that you are a spiritual being in a physical body. Yes. And then there is a psychologist. But there are some who may not lean to realize how everything ties together to ensure that you operate and can have good mental and emotional health. So yes. this is interesting. And 
My, 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 my. Yes. Mm. I had a, a retreat. My husband and I had a retreat in, in Jamaica for years up in Cooper's Hill. And we had persons coming from all over the world to reverse. It's a disease reversal um, facility where people came to reverse cancer. They came to reverse AIDS. They came to reverse multiple sclerosis, um, Alzheimer's, um, manic depressive issues, um, schizophrenia, and of course, all the different deliverances from the spiritual issues. Um, so I've worked with all of them. And because of the approach, my approach is not what I learned in all of those three, four, five. I actually did eight degrees. I don't use any of the information that I learned in those degrees. Those degrees just give me background to what is wrong with the person in terms of but how to fix it did not come from those degrees. They all came straight out of the Bible, right? Because I found that the therapies I was taught in all the eight degrees that I did were just coping mechanisms. They were management mechanisms. They mm. were mechanisms to remove the symptoms, but none of them were cure. Mm. Right? And this is why, you know, different medical organizations say that you cannot, you cannot say that this bush or this tea or this anything will cure. Right? Because they do not know of cure. And in fact, nothing you do can cure your situation. So I know I'm doing background here, but it's important because once you understand this background, you know not only how to deal with your drug addiction, but with any other issue that you face. One, when you take anything that removes your symptoms only and not go to your root, you are putting a band-aid on something that needs to have a major operation right so the issue is one of going to the root and all the different therapies everything you will learn whether you study medicine i'm medically trained but i do not practice medically everything that you are taught in all degrees that i know of and all the ones that i have pursued and all the ones that my friends have pursued are about management and coping. If you take an operation, if you do surgery, if you take medicine, if you uh, eat, uh, go vegetarian, you are raw foodist, uh, you take supplements, none of them can heal you. They can only remove your symptoms. So it doesn't matter what intervention you take. There is one way you get healed by following the word of your creator, the directives of your creator. That means he told you how to get healing, right? It says he sent his word to heal you. That's the scripture verse, but it doesn't say much to person's in ter uh, terms of interpretation. But what is the word? The word is instruction. So in how I find the cure for all the conditions is digging into the word of God, right? And there are several words. There are three words that I know of. There is the written word. There is the living word. How did Jesus do it, right? Because when he went out there, he put, made spit lump on the eye with, with clay. Um, is that a potion? Um, is it the spit and the clay that healed? Or is it what he said that healed? Right? Uh -huh. You know, when he did deliverance and said, come out. Right? And people were healed of these psychological issues. It's the same thing I do. 
right? But what is it? Is it is it his mannerism? What is it? It's the word that he spoke that did that. So it doesn't matter whether it's body, soul, or spirit. It is the instructions. So I said we had the written word, the living word, and then there is a spoken word. The spoken word is the word of the immediate word that is spoken into your spirit. Well, it comes from the pulpit or it comes from a madman on the side of the road tell you to do something or it drops into your spirit and you say, my mind did say, or I have a belly feeling, a gut feeling. It doesn't matter. That's the spoken word because it comes to you at the it is spoken to you out of circumstances or directly. So there is the written word, the living word, Christ's example, and spoken word. So those are the three words that I use in all my therapies. So this is why I tell people I buried my eight degrees. I do not use them for the healing process. I use them to be able to interact with people who have the same training and to communicate and to have earthly um what should i say whatever but when i do write my name if people need my degrees i put three of them behind my name but generally i don't put them i put what i do i'm a pneumopsychosomatologist i'm a supernatural life coach and i am a clinical therapist that's what i do so the degrees have nothing to do with what i do i use the word and instructions to say how to heal because the same way god healed and he had details and instructions you know how i find out how to do all cardiovascular issues i just go through the word of god and every time anything to do with cardiovascular anything to do with blood you know your cardiovascular is your blood heart uh, circulation so I go through and do a chain reference, anything to do with blood, arteries, veins, heart. And when it says heart, I mean the heart organ, not the usual one. The heart in the Bible usually means spirit. There are only two references where H-E-A-R-T means the organ. All the others mean spirit. So I go through and I study Hebrew and Greek so I could get the real uh, meaning. And I go through and find all the references to anything to do with blood, veins, arteries, circulation, um, and an organ, right? And that's how I learned to heal cardiovascular system. If it is bones, I do the same thing. If it is sinews, if it is liver, when I'm doing muscular skeletal system, I'm healing that. I do the same thing, go straight through the Bible, and I find every reference to sinews, ligaments, bones, tissue, and every part of the muscular skeletal system. And I do the same thing for all the others, for pulmonary. When I'm doing pulmonary, I go through, that is the whole breathing, lungs. I go through every word that has to do with lungs, breath, life, congestion, and you get, it's all there. Mm -hmm. it's every the treatment is there everything mm -hmm. you so know he sent his word to heal you <laughs> he sent his word to heal you right and what people don't understand about the power of this word of god is that he spoke the very existence of everything into being correct by saying let there be light so there's power in the spoken word but then moses wrote it down as well and we read it <laughs> and so all of the elements of it are coming into our lives without we even realizing it yes and that is why it is always important to us to always repeat the word of god out of our mouths because it brings people think it's just a feel-good thing but the word of god Hebrews 4.12 is powerful. <laughs> you know, Even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and, and the bone and the marrow. You see, when people read this Bible, sometimes they think it's a theoretical thing. 
what you know, even that knows, bit of scripture by itself defines the very vein of how the word is so powerful. I'm so sorry for taking over your discussion. No, 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 yes. no, no, no. I am sharp. I am right because I was saying it is so important to read it aloud. Ah. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the and word of you God. Must say, you know, if you hear it all over the place and you don't say it for yourself, it's not going to help you, you know. It is going to go into your intellect until you speak it for yourself. Mm. That is when the faith comes. And, you know, you're encouraged when you hear it on the radio and in a song and the preacher say it and the friend say it and everything. But until you say it yourselves, it is an issue of um, I, one of the things I did was neuroscience and the Bible. The whole issue of DNA yes. changing the brain. Bam, 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 bam. You have to do it yourself. And if I don't say out of my mouth those words, my molecules in my body will not hear it and will not receive it. I go to the doctor and the doctor says, you know, I've had cancer twice. The doctor mm -hmm. says, well, you know, I did all these tests and blah, 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 blah. And you know how cancer, I've had cancer of the brain and cancer of the larynx, right? You know, have cancer of, the, of the, the larynx and this is what you need to do. Now, the doctor said it. My um, molecules heard it, but they don't take instructions from anybody outside of me. They are now waiting on me to say it. Oh my God, I have cancer of larynx. That one thing tells them, okay, this factory is going to shut down soon. So let's just help the process of shutting down. Do you know that's, that's what happens? I studied this on the microscope, on the test conditions with all these electrodes on the person's head. Hi, my name is Melissa Thompson, and I'm the owner and founder of The Gift Curator. We're a full-service online gifting business that specializes in custom and curated gift designs for any occasion life has to offer. Basically, the service that we offer, the individual who is purchasing the gift doesn't at all come in contact with it in terms of packaging or anything. All of that is handled for them and it can be delivered directly to their loved one's door and you have these electrodes on their head uh. and you say to them um no you also have their their bloodstream and their lymphatic system on a microscope okay mm. and you say to them as a doctor you know we have just confirmed that you have stage four cancer and you have two weeks to live Okay. Um, now you see, it's like you see the, the, the lymphocytes and those cells in your you know, white blood cells. You see them swimming around and you see them sort of a slow down when that is said by the doctor. So you see them slow down and they are swimming, you know, and they are waiting now on instructions because they heard, right? And you say, Oh my God, two weeks to live. Oh, I got, I got so much to do. I got to get everything in order. That is confirmation. Now, you know what they do? They take instructions from you. This factory is shutting down in two weeks time. You know what they do? They start helping you to shut down. So you see those things now, you see them swimming around. And instead of using their firepower, because these lymphocytes, they have those that, um, what should I say, that explode the cells. They mm. have the others that eat the exploded cells and they move it out of the body, okay. Um, so instead of fighting the cancer cells, they are not going to fight each other because they are going to be out of work in two weeks so they start killing each other this is what you call autoimmune diseases they start killing each other 
but they're, they're killing off each other is not as a result of what is physically wrong with them. It's as a result of what you told them to do, right? No, we still have the electrodes going and you see them starting to fight each other and we stop and we say, the person now says, but this is foolishness. I'm not going to die. I am going to live. And not only am I going to live, but I am going to live health free. I mean, healthy. I am not going to give into this thing. I said, we are going to kill every cancer cell in our body. You just reversed that first instruction. At that point, you see the lymphocytes. We're still looking at the microscope. They turn around and they start attacking the cancer cells. And you see them swim towards these cancer cells. They surround the cancer cells. Pow! And you just see the cancer cell explode. And then other ones come in and gobble it up. And then they die and move out of the body. So in a situation like that, you got to be drinking a lot of water, bam, 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 to move the eliminatory organs and get the lymphatic system flowing. So this is the sort of stuff that I study, right? So that we can direct the healing process where it needs to be. Now, after, you have to remember, you know, the healing of our bodies is a choice that has already happened, meaning by his stripes, we were healed. Not going to be healed when we call on him. The 53. It has already been done. So we are the healed, learning how to walk into our healing. We are not going to be healed when we call. It has already been completed. And this is the imp most important thing that I learned from human psychosomatology. The fact that I am an eternal being. I am not an eternal being. My spirit is not eternal future. My spirit is eternal past, present, and future. So I was created before the foundations of the earth. Before God said, let there be light and come and created the firmament. I was created. So I've been living from eternity past. I've been brought into the Earth's sphere in 1949 to do this program today. <laughs> I've been brought into this Earth's sphere to do everything I've been doing from 1949 to the present time, right? And so it is over this period of time that I have been um, what should I say, uh, becoming, becoming who I was created to be and developing into who I will continue to be developing into according to my obedience to that voice in my spirit, right? So understanding that concept is also very, very important because when you understand that you are an eternal being, your body is not eternal, right? And your soul is the, for you techie people, and I am not techie, as you know, <laughs> the soul is the operating systems and all the different things that have, the whole thing. Your spirit is, is, is who you are, yes. your essence, right? And your body is where you live, but whole operations go on in the soulish realm, right? And so because operations go on in the soulish realm, that is the part that needs saving from ourselves. <laughs> he yeah. came to save our souls. But the spirit is his spirit in us. And the body is just a, is just a house where everything show up, everything manifests, but nothing happens in the body. It happens in the spirit percolate through the soul because of our responses and emotions and how we deal with whatever has happened. And then it does show up in the body, right? So you can't heal it in the body. You have to go back and heal it where it started. So, you know, all of this is important background, not just for um, overcoming drug addiction, but if you understand this background of 
overcoming anything, then you will be able to apply it elsewhere. But we need to understand who we are, how healing takes place, and what possibilities there are for us because we are amazingly made. And the yes. fact that we succumb to one or another condition, negative condition, has to do with our choices that we make. Because the fact that we have the spirit within us, he breathed into us and we became a living soul. Yes. Dr. Cheryl, <laughs> you are teaching here. Yes. You know, th there are some persons who are never aware of the things that you just said. We have to take a commercial break, but I thank you so much for laying the foundation of some of the things in relation to the connection between the body, the soul, and the spirit. The, the connections between... <laughs> The parts of us, quote unquote, many people don't understand. And also the fact that we are a walking miracle. It says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And the God who breathed breath into us, he's the one that has the, the last say, so to speak, in yes. where we are and where we're going. Yes. And when it is that we come to and understanding of what he wants for our purpose and our meaning, that is when some things will start. And everything in the body, the soul, and the spirit will start to come back together. So yes. come, let's go for a quick commercial break. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much for that. You can become a part of the Overcomer series. Ready to get in on the action? Look out for giveaways each week from March 11th to May 6th, 2022. We will also be gifting prizes from Scripture Trinkets by AP. If you are a follower on social media, you may win cool Overcomers gear. We'd also love to hear your story of overcoming. You'll be a winner of an amazing gift box from the gift curator JA. What has Christ done for you that you thought you would not be able to accomplish? What have you been able to achieve against all odds tell us in a video of less than one minute and hashtag overcomers challenge or email it to us at johnnyljalcock at gmail.com further details on social media remember with christ in the vessel you can smile at any storm here's to a great season of overcoming thank you so much everybody we were having such a great discussion with Cheryl Chung, Dr. Cheryl Chung, on various issues in relation to the body and how, you know, things happen between the body, the soul, and the spirit, and how conditions form. So she's going to go a little bit deeper now in terms of the formation of conditions in our body. You can go ahead, Dr. Cheryl Chung. Okay, thank you very much. You know, one of the things that I marvel at is that mm. most of my um, clients, I don't call them patients, <laughs> yes. most of my clients come to me and they say, Doc, I've been healthy all my life. I've never been to the hospital, I've never been to the And all of a sudden, I get this cancer. Or all of a sudden, I get so-and-so. All right, now, uh, we start from the scratch. We have a self-healing body. We have an immune system, which is our internal healing system. The immune system is really responsible for diffusing and cleansing the body. And all healing is not about what we put into your body but about what we get rid of out of your body, right? Now, let me just clarify that a little more. I have what is called a disease reversal protocol. Disease 
reversal protocol. I do not treat conditions. I reverse them by informing you of God's way of getting the cure. Right. So the protocol, the disease reversal protocol is stop doing what you're doing wrong. Stop poisoning yourself. <laughs> Two, clear out, cleanse, cleanse, just cleanse out all the bad stuff. And three, build the back. So the actual pivotal activity of cure is cleanse. But it's a three-way thing. I'm a trilogist. So my three earrings, right. I do three of everything. One God, body, soul, and spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. No. Stop. Cleanse. Build. And if you use those three things, Anything that is wrong with you, physically, spiritually, financially, everything else, Ali, <laughs> then you can use those three and be successful every time, 100%. My reversal and success rate is 100%. Because I don't take anybody who don't agree with what I, my, my protocols. You don't agree with my protocols, go somebody and go with somebody else's protocols that you agree with. That will heal you because your mind is going to do it. Your spirit agreeing with your mind, right? So, um, stop. Stop the contributing factors. And let me tell you something. Every single one of us know exactly what contributes to our illness, right? First of all, you know, you, you, you're going along and, you know, on every week you are at the um, ice cream shop. You ever notice when you go to the ice cream shop, it's y'all and big, fat, overweight people, right? And you go every week, you go to the ice cream shop. Whether you're fat or you're slim, it don't make any difference, right? Because some people metabolism, they'll never get fat. But they still poison themselves. Once it's dairy ice cream, you're poisoning yourself. And every time you buy it, you say, oh, I don't do this very often. And you guzzle down the ice cream. And you say, well, I didn't buy a big one. I bought a small one. And you keep doing it consistently. You know you're not supposed to do it. But because you're not getting any immediate results, you just keep doing it until something pops down. And then you say, all my life I've been so healthy. I eat good, you know. Right? <laughs> I tell you, all these eat good, healthy people who come to me with cancer and, and, and deadly diseases. You know, I wonder. Do, we all have the spirit of God. Every time we're going to do something bad for us, the spirit of God tells us. Cheryl, um, that's enough. You're going over the point. Me too. All right? So I'm not excluding myself. And sometimes I say, oh, but look here. I, I don't show any symptoms, Lord. You know, I said, you know, I'm a friend. I'm just here to visit you so I can, you know, whatever. You're justified. So you must identify and stop the contributory factors. Don't do what certain uh, medical people tell you. Cut down. Cut down is to make sure that you go back to them. That you never get off the hook. It cannot be cut down. It is top. S-T-O-P. Stop. Right? Because... If you have a condition that has been diagnosed and you take one grain more of salt, it's going to make it worse. And you have already reached the threshold. So identify contributory factors, stop them. Next, you're full up of all sorts of crap. Um, horrible stuff, right? I was about to say crap, but nothing is wrong with crap. It's the thing that comes out of the back end of the dog and, you know, other animals so we are literally filled of that stuff right because we now need to cleanse you know there are several ways you can cleanse right you can do organ cleanses you know you can cleanse your colon you can cleanse your kidneys you can cleanse your liver you can cleanse your this you can cleanse your lung cleanse your blood cleanse your blah, blah, blah. and i used to use those protocols and it was just very very traumatic when people are sick 
then there's another thing you can do. You can take what is called a cellular cleanse. And I have developed a cellular cleanse where you just take that particular product for a month and it cleanses every cell. So you don't have to do, it cleanses all mucus, all liquid, all solid, and all gaseous waste, which are the four wastes. And the other thing is this, you can just reorganize your life by cleansing the organs. I mean, making sure your eliminated organs are moving out your stuff as it should. So you cleanse your liquid waste, you cleanse your solid waste, cleanse your liquid waste by sweating, drinking enough water and urinating until your urine is colorless. Second, you can cleanse your solid waste by again, enough water, enough fiber and defecating three times a day, minimum. And there is a characteristic that you must look for in your waist to know that it is moving out the stuff properly. Liquid, solid, gaseous waste. The reason for exercise, one of the main reasons for exercise is to make a deep breathe, to get rid of the gaseous waste. Because we, I am not getting rid of any gaseous waste now because I'm not breathing deep enough. So you have to get to a place of exertion. We are going, <sighs> that's when I'm getting rid of gaseous waste. So liquid, solid, you got to deep breathe, whether you do deep breathing exercise or you do exercises that, that exert and make a deep breathe. Get rid of gaseous waste. And the fourth is mucus waste. We all know about mucus, right? And you need, in order to get rid of mucus waste, you need, again, all four of them need water, you know? So if you're not having enough water in your diet, you cannot get rid of your waste, right? The fourth one is mucus waste, and you get rid of that by melting the mucus that is coagulating all over your body, in your blood, in your eyes, in your mucus membranes, all over your body. And you do that by hot foods, not temperature, hot foods, which are pepper, onion, garlic, ginger, uh, uh, radish, and all the things, and that make your nose run, or your eye run, or so and so, are hot foods that clear your mucous membranes. We got it all. So you can either take organ cleanses, you can take one, or you can take a cellular cleanse, which we'll do it at the cellular level, or you can just reorganize your life to make sure you're having your three bowel movements a day, you're drinking your eight to 12 glasses of water a day, you're deep breathing by doing your exercises, and you are eating the hot foods to make your nose run every day. You see, it's so easy it is. God made those systems so that it can heal you. And so the cleansing process, and then once you're cleansed, you're healed then you start rebuilding the immune system. So it is in the physical, so it is in the psychological with your relationships, and so it is in the spiritual with your spirit. Stop doing the wrong thing and the contributing factors. Cleanse, whether you're going to get deliverance or you're going to do whatever cleansing process, and then you rebuild. So that's the process. And so this is how disease develop. If you have been doing those things, your body self healing. So when you do something, um, for instance, you get a scratch away from next morning, the scratch is gone, it's healed overnight. Hmm. But every time you do not totally get rid of or cleanse something that comes in your system, it builds up and builds up and builds up. You, you bring in, for instance, Let's say you're bringing two tons of or two pounds of dirt, right? And you cleanse out one pound. You have a pound left. And then in the next year, you do the same thing again. You have a pound left. Ah. So when you see you get a, a debilitating disease or something that is really bad, it is because you didn't cleanse out all of it along the way.
right? And so it didn't show any symptoms because your body was dealing with it, scrapping with it, it is struggling with it. And every night when you go to bed, it is repairing and fixing that and fixing that and getting rid of that and blah, blah, blah. But there are things building up, building up, building up. And then, whoops, you go to the doctor and you're diagnosed with X. And you say, oh my goodness, how did I get that? I've been eating well, I've been doing this, I've been doing that, I've been doing that. You did not cleanse properly. So it is in the physical, so it is in the spiritual. If you're having bad relationships or you're not paying attention to your spiritual life, and you just let this little thing slide, and that little thing slide, and that little thing slide, and then all of a sudden you are into a big compromising situation where your teeth X from your boss, and you want to, I mean, how did she do that? She was such a wonderful person and a wonderful Christian, but you let her lick a pencil, you take home, and then you take home, you know, take the stapler, I can't take the stapler, you just have a whole heap around the office, right? And then in two tools, you, you, you embezzle $1 million, and you wonder, how did I get there? Same principle. <laughs> let me give you a break. <laughs> Dr. Cheryl, John, <laughs> there's one thing that you mentioned which I want you to speak of uh, before we go to the break, and that is the rebuilding. You mentioned the stop and the cleanse. Oh, the building, what rebuilding. What people do to ensure that they rebuild their bodies to the best? Okay, rebuild. No, we're talking about the immune system, eh? Mm -hmm. And to be quite honest, it is the body that we're talking about now for the rebuilding because the body has been the one that has been, what should I say, <laughs> boxed around and boofed up because whatever happens in your body is because of what you did wrong in spirit and, 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 and so, right? Your emotions and all that sort of thing. Okay. Now to rebuild the body, we have what we call five elements of physical life. Five elements, right? They are fresh air pure water, sunlight, earth foods, and PEMFs, pulse electromagnetic fields. People call it chi, people call it energy, people call it all sorts of different things, but it is the vibrations of life. It is what God breathed into us and we became a life, alive, okay? And so, it is the energy that comes from the soil, from the earth, from the sun, from the uh, uh, water, from the fresh air, and from foods that come from under the earth, or from leaves that come from a root that was under the earth. So the earth, it's the electromagnetic vibrations of the earth. That is the fifth element. That's the one that most people don't understand. They understand the other four, right? Now, I want to go back and show you the five elements. I want to put my hand so you can't see my hand. All right. <laughs> I can see your hands. All and right. I'm pretty sure our audience can as well. Right. Okay. So, fresh air. We need four hours of fresh air every day. Water. We need eight cups of pure water. Eight cups, eight ounces, right? And if you are in a, a situation where you're sick or you are doing a lot of exercise or you're losing a lot of water, you go, move up to 12. Um, sunlight. We need two hours of direct sunlight. I don't mean on the veranda or in your car with the sun coming in. Outside. And incidentally, your fresh air needs to be outside as well preferably on the tree. That's how you get the best oxygen, right? And then uh, sunlight, two hours. And this is how we maintain our melanin, right? And the production of melanin. And this is why, I don't know if you are aware, but melanin is the uh, substance, let's just put it that way, that makes everything operate at a supernatural level. Right? So if you don't get enough sun and you don't get enough of the other two, because it's all of them together, help with the melanin, then you will operate substandard. Right? So this is why we are 
best athletes, who are the best chess players, who are the best scientists, who are body, soul, and spirit all operate supernaturally when you're getting your melanin. You're feeding it, all right? Sometimes they call it melatonin. It also helps to, to build that particular substance. But these names, you know, are just made up by people and, you know, whatever, moving right along. So one, two, three. Fourth, earth foods. Earth foods are the food that come out of the earth. So this, these are earth foods. It's in Genesis 129. I have given you every seed bearing herb and every fruit in which there is a seed that shall be for your nourishment at the cellular level. That's what Genesis 1.29 says. So it is every, God has three things. He has herbs, which are small bushes. He has grasses. I'm just giving you his nomenclature. Grasses, herbs. And herbs don't mean what we mean by herbs. Herbs are just small bushy plants, right? Um, and then you have trees, right? And you have fruit. That's it. Everything comes into that category. Now, we have fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, peas, beans, and grain. But all of them come under those categories there. So those are the things that we need to use. Anything else outside of that may taste nice, may be great, but it's not healing. So the healing stuff is all the things that have a seed in there. So the seedless melons and the seedless grapes and the seedless anything is a poison, right? And anytime you take those things, it affects your DNA and it breaks down your whole system because God said, this is what is your food. So that those are the earth foods. That is number four. And number five is PEMS, post electromagnetic field. It is the whole electricity, uh, the electromagnetic uh, vibrations of life, the whole um, spectrum of our electrical system. And that is the most important one. Most important one. That's how Jesus healed. He just sent out those vibrations and corrected them. <laughs> by his word, healing. And each of us can do that. Each of us can do that. But a lot of us don't have those vibrations in us because those vibrations are produced by the, uh, what I call the positive emotions on the top of the vibrational chart. When you operate in hate, disappointment, um, all the negative emotions. You know, you have the, 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 those negative emotions that are listed in Bible. Now remember them. I know the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit. So when you operate with the fruit of the Spirit, your vibrations are way up on top and you have the capacity to heal, right? But when you vibrate in down the bottom there with, you know, rejection and you can't heal. You can't be a a, a, a channel of healing because when you operate in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, uh, what's the other one? A gentleness and self-control. When you operate in those and you have to, you know, just naturally operate. You have to make an effort to do it because it's not natural to you. It's not a natural part of you. So when you still want to do the wrong thing, you just pull yourself in and say, no, I will not do it. Oh, God, give me the grace. Help me, Jesus. And then you do the right thing and you keep vibrating. People ask me, how oh, you have so much energy? I say, because I beat myself every day. You know, people don't see that part of me. I'm on floor balling. <laughs> dropping around and carrying on when I recognize my feelings and my natural inclinations. And it's a daily thing, right? So that I can operate in these high vibrations, so that I can speak healing, I can touch people and heal, I can 
because I am open to the right vibrations. That's how Jesus heals. And that is how we all have the potential to heal. So you understand the building, the five things. So you see what we are doing here? We are in our present state, you know what we do? We think that food can heal us is one fifth. Food yes, only holistic approach. Fifth, right? And this is why a lot of people don't understand five elements of life, right? Do you know you can live on any of these? Recently, there has been an upsurge in breatharians. They don't eat. They get all their vitamins, minerals, protein, chlorophyll, and enzymes from the sun, from water, and from the, 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 the vibrations. They just take out this one, the earth foods, and other four keep them going. Breatharians, you understand? So we mm -hmm. have to understand that the food is the least important one, but we spend 90% of our thing on here, and this is where the problem is. So I hope I have explained how you build, right? Yeah, yes, so, it was it was very comprehensive and very yes. clear, Dr. Sharon yes. Chung. It, it fascinates me um because doctors always speak about these holistic approaches but i think what has been lost in the in the in in the transmission of it to persons who may be going through things and trying to get it done properly is that they understand the theory but in practice they don't do it yes <laughs> and that's so, why i all my degrees <laughs> right and unless we are doing what the doctor orders, quote unquote, and the chief doctor was Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the great physician, of course, as you mentioned, prayed and fasted like wow, was always out in the open air doing his thing. That's right. Sunlight, that yes. was his thing. Huh? And you know, one of the knows. things that fascinated me, yes, about him is that every time there was going to be a crisis he was somewhere else getting the power from his father to All deal right. with the crisis he Two was praying things. before him. that was one he was praying and and, and and agonizing because he knew what was coming up right mm -hmm. and other thing is that that was a almost a reaction to what he knew was coming but the other thing is that he had a rhythm Every before day, before day, he mm. communed with his father. Yes. He got up before, and that is the thing that has kept me. 4 a.m., sometimes 3 a.m., sometimes 2 a.m., but it has to be before mm. day. Mm. You get up, and you deal with all the issues, and you just get into that presence for, mm -hmm. you know, one, two hours, and then your anything that coming up you when the daylight hmm? you're ready and just for the viewing audience and for those who are there i will try to project some of the things on the bottom of the screen before jesus went into ministry he had 40 days in the wilderness no food no water right praying before he passed over gennesaret and cast out a legion <laughs> of devils out of a man, of the man, they, they couldn't even restrain. They said he put they put chains on him and he burst out of it. He was praying in the morning time before he crossed over into a boat. And before he went there, he even stilled a heavy storm to get where he was going. And there are other examples. Yes. Before he healed, well, Lazarus was dead. So before he rose Lazarus from the dead four days before, he was in community, sitting and trying to get some things done. And then four days later, he went and then raised Lazarus from the dead. And the major example, before he went and did the greatest thing ever anybody ever did on earth, on the cross, he was praying and subduing so himself to ensure that the will of God was in him in that garden of Gethsemane. Just to show you how 
uh, he was in tune with everything. He even asked the disciples to pray with him, to be with him. And they were so tired, they fell asleep, and that was it. But he yes. knew what was coming up. He was in a rhythm, as you said, Cheryl. And he ensured, he subdued himself with God to say, not my will, dear God, but yours be done. And then the rest is history. We're all now redeemed. So thank you so much for that section. We'll now go to another commercial break. And when we come back, we will deal with a little bit more specific things in relation to um, illnesses soon come. Scripture Trinkets by AP for all your unique tokens and gifts. Check out our line of car trinkets, keyring trinkets, fridge magnets, Christmas ornaments, custom trinkets and plaques, and much more. Go ahead, pick the perfect gift and share the word boldly. And um, some people don't understand it because yeah. they, they see the power of Jesus, as you rightly said, but they didn't understand the, the waiting periods, the times he was in fasting, the times that he stayed in the spirit and subdued himself. Good night, guys. So you've just saw an episode with me speaking to Cheryl Trunk, Dr. Cheryl Trunk. It is actually part one of a two-part discussion that we have on issues surrounding how to overcome diseases through uh, alternative medicine and natural ways and also some of the things that people may not be aware of of how diseases form. Please tune in next week when we start a further discussion on this and hone in on a very important topic of overcoming addiction. We'll use some of the details of the things we spoke of tonight to discuss the next thing. But let us pray to end this episode. Lord Jesus, you are the one who is always with us. You are the one who sees us and understands us the most. And it is in the times when we feel lost, when we have issues in our bodies, when we go through conditions and diseases and illnesses, that we sometimes feel furthest away from you. Remind us that that is when you come close. That is when you are ready to give us the aid that we need. But also remind us of some of the things that we need to be doing, just as Dr. Cheryl shared tonight, in our own lives, to allow us to know that you have given us everything from the herbs of the field and the sun in the sky and the, the air that we breathe and the things that we will eat and how we go about our lives transforming ourselves enough through faith in you and probably even through going to more learned practitioners than ourselves to gain some knowledge to understand some things about how to treat our bodies to come back to full health help us dear god and allow us to have our bodies reach to the peak of its possible performance for those who may be suffering from illnesses. Dear God, help them through whatever situation they may be having. Make this episode be some guiding light for someone somewhere. Whatever they may be going through, hypertensive problems, problems with diabetes, issues with different organs of their bodies, such as the pancreas or the prostate, issues with cancer, dear God, issues with lifestyle diseases and autoimmune diseases, anything that may be plaguing their bodies, remind them that you are the Jehovah Rapha, that you are the God who heals all issues and all things in our bodies that will bring it back down from the performance that you have given it. Allow the very Holy Spirit in our lives to enliven us and bring us back to full health. Bring us back to peace through your balm in Gilead. Help us, dear God, to know that you are an overcoming God. You overcome the pains of this life. You overcome the issues of our minds 
and of our hearts and our souls and our bodies. Help us to come back to full health, full health mentally, full health emotionally, full health physically, and to associate ourselves socially and relationally in proper love and forgiveness and mercy with each other. And also to enlarge our spirit man, our inner man, to the way that you want us to walk in full maturity in Christ. Give us full holistic health, dear God. Help us to overcome the issues that we have and even reverse them back to perfectness in you. Amen. Tune in next week. Until next week, remember, there are some things in this life that can bog you down and can make this earth look difficult. But I still believe that this can be a great season of overcoming. Check out the outro. Blessings. Good night, everybody. Here is what's coming up next on the Overcomers series, season two, Greater Is He. Dealing with drug addiction, but I have to also remember um, that drug addiction very often is twinned with several other issues like manic depressive behavior, schizophrenia, and psychosis, neurosis, all the other, all the other mental conditions are directly related to drug addiction. And in the case of persons who are not addicted to the illegal drugs, nor the legal drugs, it is the cause of an addiction to something else. Join us next week for another inspiring and thought-provoking discussion. And remember, you are an overcomer because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world.